But yeah, dude, that was a that was a mind bending podcast. With he him. is in he's he does his research. He's really smart. I've listened to hours and hours and hours of that guy talk. I'm definitely gonna watch his podcast. That it's a good one. Guy. I bet everything he says is just. So we talked about takes we, you on a deep journey into the history of mankind. You know, like he believes that humans have existed for long, long before what the history books say. You know, mm-hmm. super interesting guy. We talked about Atlantis, this lost city mm-hmm. of Atlantis, and where he thinks it is. Yep. And he's going up there to uh, to do some filming and to go in a submarine around uh, the Azores. To try to find Atlantis. And you know where the Azores is? Like the nope. Azores Plateau. It's no like if, if you go up to Spain and you go directly out into the middle of the Atlantic. It's like halfway. It's like a little, almost halfway between uh, Greenland and Spain. And uh, that's where he thinks Atlantis is. And he's going to go into a submarine and explore... Under, that, that's where the Azores is. That's oh. where he thinks the lost city of Atlantis was. That looks like somewhere that Atlantis would be. Um, so there's some there's some submerged volcanoes and mountains right there. Interesting. And there's some crazy looking shit. Pull up some photos of the Azores on like Google Photo or whatever. This would be an epic trip for the Jug Squad. Go I think the there's Azores. surf there too. There's is good, that there's, where they filmed the beach? There's good surf there. It does look like the beach, right? <laughs> Get rid of island, maybe. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just Azores, yeah. Yeah, there's some in, insane shit in the Azores. That'd be so cool. I hope he discovers something that's, yeah. like, groundbreaking. That'd be so sick. It's, his, it's been, like, his life's work, you know? Yeah. there's rare. It's rare you find somebody who's dedicated that much of their life to one specific thing, mm-hmm. geology. Yeah, he's been on and, and Rogan's podcast three times, too, I'm pretty sure. I think it's like seven times. Is it? Yeah. Oh, shit. But he's like so into geography and cosmology. Like yeah. somebody who knows so much about the history of the earth and rocks and mm-hmm. then so much about the fucking stars and the planets. And He's got it all on paper too. He's well, he take He compiles like so many other people's research. You know, he yeah. takes everything and like collects all their thoughts and mm-hmm. all their facts and everything that they've learned. And yeah, he paints some really <coughs> cool pictures. You guys watch the uh, YouTube channel After School? Mm-mm. Spelled with a K. It's one of the, my favorite channels that exists on YouTube. And it's just a guy who's really good at drawing. Uh-huh. And um, he takes philosophers and politicians and d- comedians and influencers and uh, takes, like, passages of things that they've said, mostly philosophers, and he draws pictures to what they're saying. Yeah, if you click on any one of his videos. Yeah, like, the last video he made was eight days ago, Terrence McKenna. I try to watch. So sick. One, you know, I've made like a daily goal to watch one of this guy's videos a day because he just takes so many different wise people's words and uh, makes really cool videos. <laughs> okay, he does these super fast animated videos. Yep. Yeah, he's a really awesome channel though because I mean I feel like everything is very like inspired, like enlightened. Yeah. Also, can you turn the air on. So yeah, ten out of ten recommend this channel if you haven't Terrence checked it McKenna, out. Go what a home crazy and motherfucker. check out his large library of videos yeah. and find something you like and check it out. You guys are familiar with like the Fibonacci sequence, then, like, because um, Randall Carlson is a big. I mean, he works with Gra- Graham Hancock pretty closely, and uh, Graham Hancock released the book uh, Fingerprints of the Gods. Mm-hmm. You guys looked into that stuff? Yeah, I read Fingerprints of the Gods. Yeah. Yeah, Fibonacci's crazy. Just like, Explain it to people. Um, It's just a series of numbers. It's just like 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, so on and so forth. And then if you take like a 1x1 one one box and you put it next to a 1x2 box and you put it next to a 2x3 box, yeah, it creates the perfect spiral that's been seen throughout all of nature. Waves, shells, your eye. You know, it's just, it's... uh. It's undeniable throughout the entire universe. And if you, like, count the, count the amount of spirals on a pine cone or on a flower or on a tree, they'll, like, pretty much always add up to one of the Fibonacci sequences. Uh-huh. Like, uh, there's this other YouTube channel of this girl, and she takes all kinds of fruits and vegetables and plants and flowers and pine cones, and she 
draws on all of the spirals and counts all of them and they just always add up to be a fibonacci number really yeah. and what does he equate that to like what does he equate that to like they just call it like the they call it like the fingerprint of the gods it's just something that can't be explained yet it's everywhere you know mm-hmm. is it at all tied into the anunnaki i don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> dude randall's a wild fucking guy randall is a beast yeah. he knows some fucking like some of the shit that he told me like about the moon and like hmm. about how the moon could possibly be hollow have you ever heard the story about how they ran a satellite in the moon? Oh, and yeah, it and it, like, like reverberated bell. for, like, yeah. 60 hours or yeah. something crazy? Yes, I did hear about that. The, yeah, it rung like a bell. Yeah. yeah. That's Whoa, what they say. I forgot about that. There's so much crazy shit. And he was saying, you know, one of the things I asked him about when he was on here, I was like, I was like so if you were in charge of, like, our species on Earth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what, and you, knowing everything that you know, because no one can possibly know what you know, Randall, what would you do right now? Like, what, what should we be doing right now? He's like, the number one priority for us right now should be to preserve our species is to get us onto the moon, like get us living on the moon as soon as possible. I'm like, not Mars or anything. He's like, no. He's like, Mars is going to take too long. Blah, blah, blah. There's all, this, all these problems. Elon Mars. thinks that Mars is in the near future. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Elon says it's going to be, what, how long does he say it's going to be? Oh, like 50, like, 100 years? Yeah. I mean, I thought it was even less than that. But he seems very confident in his rocket's abilities. And Oh, man. But the moon is going to have to be an intermediary yeah, point sure. to the Mars. Yeah, So he's like, the first thing we should do is get on the fucking moon because if something happens on Earth, we need a way to at least get some of us off the Earth to preserve our species because he he truly believes that there's there's an extinction extinction event event coming very soon. Wow. And we're in that 100-year window right now? Yes. (laughs) For not only the asteroids, but the super volcanoes. Would Would you go to the moon if everybody started moving there? Shit. I mean, what kind of life is that, you know? What I'll if, probably if just the catch the, the wave that the last, the, the last tsunami. <laughs> yeah, I'll just no go waves. paddle out. There's no surf on the moon. Yeah, no, he's talking an event though that would be like, like, like every everything ends like a shock wave so powerful that like you just yeah. die instantly. Yeah. Well, yeah, not only, I mean instantly. Like, it depends how close you are to. Yeah. Like they're saying it. They're saying if the ye- I think I watched the, the Yellowstone documentary. They said if the volcano erupted it would be in Yellowstone, a slow death for all of us. It would then. be. It would be everyone in the U.S. would die within a couple weeks. Uh Obviously, in like the two, like the 500 mile vicinity of the volcano, instant death. Mm -hmm. But um, the entire United States would take a couple weeks and then it would eventually get over to Europe. And we would run out of oxygen, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it would black out the skies, shit would die. And And everything would have to rebuild. Oh my God, dude. Could you imagine? Like, just like. When hurricanes come here and we lose power for a week or two, like Irma, remember mm-hmm. Irma? Yeah, and dude, I feel like that that volcano, the last one that erupted in the ocean, like that was a real wake up call. That for was people. Insane. like life, life as we know it can change like that, like mm-hmm. everything, you know, like all. <laughs> and that's another problem that I have with like grinding TikTok and like putting all my time into something that doesn't like serve me or the planet. You know, I want to do stuff that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like our days are numbered. Obviously, they are numbered. 